darkness. Okay. Um, so, members, welcome you to Public Accounts Committee. Today's meeting is in accordance with the revised guidance. Uh, four committees uh, revised on the 2nd of June 2020, a copy of which is in your pack, pages 10 to 18. Um, could I, to assist proceedings, suggest that all devices are uh, set to mute, except when speaking, and I will ask members to speak in turn. Um, what, what I will do is, um, if members in agreement, obviously those who are, uh, Ms Flynn who is joining us remotely, can't indicate, so I can't see she's indicating. So I will um, go to her first, if members who are happy enough uh, that I do that, uh, to ensure that she's included in proceedings. Members are content? Great. <coughs> so, members, the objectives of today's meeting are as follows. To consider correspondence received since March 2020 and to consider the forward work programme up until 20, July 2020 and into autumn 2020. Uh, Mr. Kieran Donnelly, CB, the Auditor uh, and Controller and Auditor General, and his team will be joining the meeting at item 6. Have members, any comments? Okay. Into public session. Okay. Okay, members, we're now in open session um, and we have quorum. Uh, so I welcome members formally to Public Accounts Committee. Mobile phones must be set in airplane mode and on si silent or turned off, and it is not sufficient to put mobiles on silent mode as they continue to interfere with the assembly recording. The session is being recorded in video and audio and can be accessed live via online streaming either on the assembly website or <coughs> Democracy Live. Uh, agenda amend number, item number one. Apologies. Have we any apologies, members? Okay, none. Um, Agenda item two, in minutes of the 27th of May 2020, pages five to nine. Um, so I refer to the minutes which are in your packs, pages six to nine of your meeting pack. Are members content that I sign those minutes? Content. Content? Content. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, agenda, agenda item number three, members, pages 10 to 18. Members, I am saddened uh, to find out that um, and hear of the passing of Mr Billy Bell, former member of this assembly and the first chair of the Public Accounts Committee, um, who some of you, um, Mr Hillich in particular, may have worked alongside uh, going back to 1998. Uh, and so that includes Mr. Bell and Mr. Close, who both passed away. So our, our uh, Mr. Dallet obviously condolences go to Mr. Bell's family and his loved ones. Um, so would any member like to make comment? I know that some of you may have known him, but not all. Mr. Mr. Hillage. Sure, indeed, it's very sad and personally for the year of uh, his passing. Uh, when we came in here in 1998, we were all sort of wet behind the ears, you would say. And uh, Public Accounts was a, an awesome committee to some of us. And Billy led us in a very professional manner and uh, conducted himself very well in the chair and conducted himself very well in the press, as indeed it got a lot of press coverage in those days. So it was very, very, very saddened to, to hear of his passing. OK. Mr. Mr. Beggs, Vice Chair. Again, I would like to pay tribute to Billy, and particularly with his involvement with this committee, which he was the, the first chair in was it 1999 or 2000. Um, I think certainly his, his friendly, affable nature uh, and his ability to talk to anybody and respect all members was very beneficial to the work of the committee uh, because it established the principle that on this committee we worked in the public interest, not for any uh, sectional interests or party political interests. And that direction uh, started uh, when he was the chair, uh, and he worked uh, successfully for many years on that basis. And uh, I think it was an important area where um, accountability was coming back into politics, where 
for so long, civil servants weren't really accountable for their actions and some uh, poor administration, etc. So uh, Billy's <coughs> influence was very important uh, at that time and is a sad loss to everyone. Okay, members. Chair, just before you move on, could I just also say, in relation to the PAC, uh, during the three years that we weren't here, uh, Clark also passed away and Michael Rickard, uh, another member or another officer who, who served, the well, served the committee well in the past. I know we're remembering members here, but I think it's appropriate that we remember Michael yeah, as well. Indeed. Okay, thank you. Okay, members. Refer to pages uh, 10 to 18 in your pack. The updated guidance for assembly committees during the public health crisis that is COVID-19. These were revised on the 2nd of June 2020. Committees are adopt, uh, uh, asked to adopt these principles to encourage consistent approach when managing essential business. <clears throat> there is now flexibility to include other business. Meetings are to be kept as short as possible, with a maximum limit of two hours in the Senate and three hours in rooms 29 and 30. Now, that has not always been adhered to. As far as I am concerned, to chair this committee, it will be adhered to. Um, are members uh, content to adhere, uh, sorry, content to note? Um, and, uh, agenda number four, uh, declaration of members' interests. Members, at each meeting, you are required to register relevant financial and other interests. Uh, does any member have any interests they wish to declare? Mr Beggs. I see under correspondence references made to the Presbyterian Mutual Society, I would have close family members who had invested in it. Okay. Yeah, I would declare I was previously an employee of TransLink and also a member of Origin North Dunborough Council, but also in relation, specifically in relation to this report, is that my stepfather is a quality manager for the A6 on given bypass. Okay. Right, thank you. Um, okay, agenda, uh, agenda item five, I'm trying to merge those two words, correspondence. Um, at this stage, I would uh, invite um, Kieran Donnelly, Controller and Auditor General, Mr. Kyle Bingham of the Assembly Support, uh, to the meeting. Members, there are nine pieces of correspondence for your consideration at pages 20 to 58 of your pack. Members then should note pages 21 to 34, correspondence from Mr. James McCune regarding the Presbyterian Mutual Society. Letters are dated the 5th of March 2020 and further dated the 30th of April 2020. There is an explanatory uh, memo from the clerk at pages 21 to 23 of your pack, and a holding letter to Mr McCune from the committee dated the 12th of May 2020 at page 34 of your pack. Clark, do you wish to brief the committee? Thank you, Chair. Um, if you refer to my memo, um, um, I give some detail, but essentially Mr McCune has written both to the Economy Committee and PAC uh, regarding a long-standing issue that dates back to 2014. Um, at that time, he raised concerns about the accounting treatment of £50 million in the financial assistance provided to Presbyterian Mutual Society in the Society's accounts. Um, he, the, just a bit of background, the Society went into administration in November 2008 with liabilities in excess of £100 million. Um, in August 2011, the Society they drew down a, a, a package of financial assistant, assistance provided by the Department of Enterprise, Trade and Investment, which is now the Department for the Economy, um, and it was distributed to its members. According to Mr McCone, the Department continued to manage the Society as a going concern, but have indicated that all remaining assets are to be realised by November 2020. Um, in Mr McCune's recent correspondence, he outlines that part of the package specified in Statutory Rule 2011, number 142, the financial assistance of £50 million, uh, provided an amount not exceeding um, – oh, it says that it, £25 million was repayable to the Department. He then goes on to say that the remaining £25 million was provided by Treasury. And he contends that that amount uh, was donated and was not to be prepared. Where his concern is, and was his concern back in 2014, that in the preparation of the accounts 
by the joint supervisors that both elements of the 50 million were treated as loans and it's the treatment of the 25 million as a loan in the accounts from treasury that he's challenging um, back in 2014 pac um, wrote on mr Peter's <coughs> behalf to the controller and auditor general um, for for his opinion on the treatment how it had been applied in the accounts and it is this that he is still um, you know challenging today um, what he's asking PAC to do um, is to forward his letter to the audit office um, I've since um, got confirmation um, that, that, that I was to do that in advance of this meeting so I have forwarded that correspondence um, and he's just essentially asking for um, a further opinion um, based on what he has now provided in that letter um, and he's also raised um, issues with the economy committee as well in relation to the financial um, did they receive the same correspondence? Yes, I believe they okay. did. Okay, thank you. And we're delighted to be joined by Mr. Kieran Donnelly, the Comptroller and Auditor General for Northern Ireland, and Mr. Kyle Bingham. Mr. Donnelly, obviously your uh, organisation has been dealing with this in the past. Um, would you like to shed some light on this issue for us, please? Yeah, hopefully I can clarify some of the issues here. Uh, if we go back to the original uh, support package, uh, it was made up of uh, three components. Uh, there was 175 million of a secured loan, and that's one that's due to be paid back in later this year, and that's something I have an interest in. Uh, there was a 25 million unsecured loan, uh, and the probability of that being paid back is uh, extremely low because it's way, way down the, the list of creditors. And third, there was a 25 million grant uh, written off. Put those two 25s together, that's 50 million. Those have long been written out of the departmental accounts. So, from the departmental account perspective, it's the 175 secured loan that uh, we have an interest in. Um, I have no locus on the accounts of. Presbyterian Mutual. My interest is in the accounts of the Department of the Economy. I'm satisfied that the accounting in the Department of Economy is is okay. Uh, now, is it logical that you could have a different treatment between the two organisations? It's theoretically possible uh, because I suppose take the 25 million uh, unsecured loan. Um, the department judgment was that uh, highly unlikely that's ever going to be paid back, and that's been written out of the department's accounts years ago. But there's still a legal obligation, uh, Presbyterian Mutual, to pay it back, so th their accountants could be taking a, a different view. Um, at the end of the day, uh, I'll be coming back to this uh, because uh, at the time the, the original package was, was agreed, the idea was. Um, that the, the secured loan would be long term, right up to this year. And the idea was um, you shouldn't have a fire sale of, of assets, you wait to the property market uh, restores. So Presbyterian Mutual would have had property in the north of England and Scotland. And their valuations carried out regularly. And the idea <coughs> was. Uh, by the time the term is up, there will be enough proceeds for the taxpayer to get the 175 back. That is something I will be looking at in, in due course. So That is it from my perspective. I was just saying, if it is helpful for, for my office to have a discussion with a correspondent, this is quite technical, that, yes. that, that might be helpful. Okay, thank you. I, I actually think that would be very helpful, um, because obviously, um, I, I uh, was a member of the Presbyterian Church going back to whenever um, this issue first became uh, in, in a matter from the public interest, public knowledge, and uh, 
you know, I would have been aware of some of the some of the, the conversations and in, in my own church around it at that time, and and I just think that uh, it's a 2008, a long time ago, um, and certainly I think people who are over it and who uh, you're going to be looking at it later this year, I think, as you rightly identify, this is very technical. And I think a conversation um, being offered to Mr. McKeown and the PMS would be a good good thing. Right. Members, what's your view? Agreed? Great, yeah. Everybody happy enough? Yeah. Okay. We do that? Yep. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Donnelly. That's, that's really helpful. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Okay, members. Then um, to note uh, in your pack, pages thirty-five to thirty-nine, a memo and table from the clerk of the Justice Committee, Christine Dara, dated twenty-sixth of March, twenty twenty. This is re regarding the Northern Ireland Office, Audit Office report on the mental health in the criminal justice system, dated May twenty nineteen. The table sets out the current position in relation to each of the three recommendations that come out of the report, uh, clerk. Um, yeah, this is um, normally um, this would normally have gone to PAC, but uh, during suspension, um, the Justice Committee was receiving correspondence from the department on the inquiry, which had been um, carried out by the former PAC. So they received the update. On where things were with regard to implementation of the NIO's <coughs> recommendations, so they have passed that through to to PAC, which should then in turn be helpful, um, you know, um, in terms of informing the committee. So it's really just information, and from this point on, it will be PAC that you know has the interest and can take it forward um, in the inquiry that. Agreed to do um, okay. in the autumn. So. Members content? Great. Great. Okay, members then, um, in your pack, pages 40, 43, correspondence from the clerk for the Justice Committee, Christine Darren, dated the 26th of March 2020, letters dated the 25th of March 2020, to uh, PRO and uh, Connolly OBE. Uh, chair of the Policing Board and a letter to Naomi Long, MLA, uh, Minister for Justice, uh, both from Paul Given, MLA, Chair of the Justice Committee. Correspondence is respect to the Northern Ireland Audit Office report on the inquiry on the duty schemes for officers in the police, sorry, the policing service in Northern Ireland and the prison service in Northern Ireland requesting what action to be taken in relation to those findings. Are members content to note? Yep. Okay. Yep. Members then note in uh, your pack at page 43, correspondence dated the 26th of March 2020 from Mike Brennan, Permanent Secretary the Department of the Economy in response to the committee's letter to the department dated the 20th of March 2020. In respect to Dr Edward Cook, the department has uh, advised Mr Cook the matter is being investigated. Are members content to note this correspondence? Great. Okay, thank you. Um, members, are you content to, uh, Mr. to write to Mr Cook advising him that the matter is being taken forward by the Department for the Economy. Agreed. Thank you. Members, noting your packet, page 44, correspondence dated the 8th of April 2020 from Ms. Tracy Mahar, Permanent Secretary for the Department of Communities, regarding the PAC report issued on the 16th of February 2011, Administration and Management of Disability Living Alliance and Appeals Process Report. The committee is informed that two of the three recommendations have been implemented, and the third. Uh, removed from the accountability grid database as agreed with the Department of Finance. Are members agreed to note this uh, correspondence? Agreed. Um, members, to note in your pack pages 45 to 54, correspondence from Tracy Mahard, 
Permanent Secretary Department Committee stated the 1st of June 2020 re governance issues in Sport NI findings and recommendations. Are members content that we take uh, this item in closed session uh, once we have considered the rest of the correspondence uh, under this item? So we will deal with the rest of the correspondence and then we will return to this in closed session. Member, happy enough? Great. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Members, a note on your pack, page 55. From Anne Watt, Director of Pivotal, dated the 1st of June 2020. Pivotal's report, moving out of lockdown, is available on their website. And Miss Watt has offered to meet with the committee. Uh, members, are you content to note this correspondence and consider asking Miss Watt to attend the Public Accounts Committee later in the year? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Members, to note in your pack, page 56, correspondence from the Audit Office dated the 1st of June 2020 regarding a whistleblower. Members are, uh, as discussed at our meeting on the 27th of May, legal advice is being sought uh, on the statutory remit of the PEC in addressing the correspondence from the whistleblower. Are members content to note the correspondence and to write to the whistleblower once the PAC legal position is known? Great. Thank you. Okay. Members, please note that at pages 57 and 58, correspondence from the Comptroller and Auditor General Kieran Donnelly dated the 12th of June 2020 in respect to issues raised by Mr T McManus. These issues stem from action against the Charity Commission for Northern Ireland, bracket CCNI, in the High Court in respect of delegation of decision-making functions. The CNAG proposes to bring a report to the Committee in due course, as the ruling has significant consequences for the work of CCNI. Uh, Mr Donnelly, would you like to comment on that? Uh, yes, uh, there's been a long running, I suppose, legal issue really surrounding the, the powers of the Charity Commission or, and um, what authority it has to delegate powers from the commissioners to, to officials. So the, uh, this has been around the courts for some time. It's been appealed. Uh, the final ruling on it was that under the legislation the commissioners had no powers to, to delegate that. So this is quite significant ramifications for, for, for what they do. And uh, so I'll be looking at the implications when I sign off this year's accounts. Um, I think uh, the whistleblower had written extensively to me and others over the years, and um, I hadn't got involved up to now, mainly because uh, the case was in the courts, and uh, I wanted to see how that would pan <coughs> out. Now, um, it's most unusual for, for any public body to have uh, a sort of situation where nothing is delegated to, to officials, where all decisions are taken, big and small, at the at the at the board level. So whether um, I suppose the sponsoring department thinks a change in regulations are needed is is a moot point. That's something I'll be looking at as well. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, and also whether this ruling has any implications for other arm's length bodies that were set up in a in a similar way. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you think, if I may ask it, do you think that's likely? That I don't others know. Will be, you just don't know. I, 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 I want to look at that. Right. Okay. Uh, but I've heard we we need to do a bit of work on it. But uh, I've heard sort of anecdotally there may be implications for other public bodies. Okay. So I want to bottom that out, and we'll look at that when I. I suppose it's not fair to ask you questions until you've had a look at it. So apologies yeah. for that. So members, are you content to note this and write to Mr. McManus in line with Mr. Donnelly's letter? To the committee dated the 12th of June. Yeah. Great. 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 Okay, at this stage, members, we will move into closed session. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Programme Signed.